Uganda, asking for tea in a public eating area will definitely mean black tea, commonly known as chai. In other countries, however, such as our neighbor Kenya, tea or chai could come in different flavors and tastes. This is because Kenya produces high tons of different tea varieties for export. Tea is the next popular beverage around the world next to water. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. All these seeds are, um, are products that have been made to meet consumer expectations. Um, Purple was developed by the Tea Research Institute uh, of Kenya um, and bred. At, it is, first of all, it's purple in color. That's the first thing you see. Um, it grows in the same conditions as other types of teas. Popular for thousands of years, tea is believed to have originated in China as a medical drink and has since gained and maintained its popularity. From the latest figures in 2018, China is rated as number one tea producers, producing 2,414,802 tons. India in second position, producing 1,252,174 tons. Kenya is third, producing 473,000 tons. Uganda produces about 10,000 metric tons of tea per annum and about 90% of tea is exported. Uh, we have had quite uh, um, uh, political stability since independence and that clearly has fostered uh, better growth of the industry uh, in Kenya than Uganda. Uganda is known to have a favorable climate for tea growing. Uganda has only exploited about 10% of its potential for growing tea and has about 21,000 hectares of land under tea growing. Tea loves acidic soils and those acidic soils um, are prevalent in all tea growing areas all over the world. Tea thrives uh, at um, a pH of about 4.5 and, um, and in well drained soils uh, of, of um, temperatures not very high um, and in Africa and in Uganda you will get an average of 18 21 degrees. Selecting the best tea in the world can be extremely difficult. The wide range of flavors from the different range of varieties make each tea type unique in its own right. Some of the varieties enjoyed worldwide include green tea, it is considered one of the healthiest teas in the world thanks to its high concentration of antitoxicants. It is also a potent weight loss aid. Green tea types come mainly from Japan and China. Black tea still contains a high concentration of antitoxicants, though not as high as those in green tea. This is a very common variety in Uganda, but when you happen to visit China, please ask for a cup of red tea. Tea, white tea, rooibos, Moroccan mint tea, famous in Morocco and consumed as the country's tea culture. Tea has evolved over time um, uh, so that it meets the requirements of the consuming um, population. Um, initially, tea would be made through orthodox means. Um, orthodox is a method of production which rolls the leaf. Um, but then, with the advent of tea bags, um, a, a method has to be created that avails the tea in a better liquoring way and then that's how the CTC process came into being. But some countries and some uh, consuming countries have remained uh, with orthodox. Russia is, uh, um, you know, uh, an orthodox consuming uh, country. Some Arab countries are orthodox consuming country. CTC is still in, I think, a third uh, of the demand of the world tea is CTC, another third is uh, orthodox, and then there are all these varieties, uh, green, uh, white, that take up the other third. So you have to position yourselves depending on your target markets that you need to, to serve. All these CTC are, um, are products that have been made to meet consumer expectations. Um, purple 
was developed by the Tea Research Institute uh, of Kenya um, and bread, it is, first of all it's purple in color, that's the first thing you see. Um, it grows in the same conditions as other types of teas. It is high in anthocyanins and they have been able to demonstrate or they have told the consuming population that those high anthocyanins uh, confer on it higher health benefits. All tea, all tea by its nature, because of the uh, containing uh, compound called catechins, ha have high health benefits. But this particular one, because of higher anthocyanins, that's the purple coloration, they have been able to demonstrate that there are better benefits for health than um, the ordinary tea, the ordinary green tea. Orthodox is also um, a method of manufacture, as I said, and you can have orthodox green, you can have orthodox black, you can have CTC green, you can have CTC black. And it's all meant to um, deliver certain benefits to the consuming population. Before we call it, tea leaves go through a thorough process to qualify it as and determine a particular tea type. Green tea, yellow tea, white tea, oolong tea, black tea and fermented teas all begin as fresh camellia sinensis leaves and go through different processing steps. Withering. Here the humidity content of the leaves is reduced by about 30% in order to make them soft and flexible for the subsequent rolling in the next stage. Rolling. The withering green leaves are rolled in large rolling machines. Here, fermentation takes place as well as the development of the essential oils, which then determine the scent and the flavor of the teas. Fermentation. For the fermentation, the leaves are spread out on a table in layers of 10 cm. In modern factories, spraying water from rotating ventilators humidifies the room in which the fermentation takes place. During the fermentation, which takes to 2 to 3 hours, the leaves change their color, which gradually becomes a copper red. The quality of the finished tea is very much dependent on the correct fermentation. Drying tear dryers are used which are fueled with wood or oil. Later when the tea is infused, the self fluid which stuck to the dried leaves is solved in the hot water and produces the aromatic and invigorating drink. Sorting. Here the tea is sieved via a number of shaking using mechanical sieves with varying sieve sizes with which the common leaf grades are separated from each other producing different grade sizes classified from leaf tea, broken tea, fannings and dust. The smaller the leaf, the stronger the infusion. The tea retains its original taste when kept in a tightly closed container away from strongly smelling foodstuff such as spices. Before planting tea in the main garden, tea seedlings are first planted in a nursery bed where they are well cared for. This will later give the trees a better resistance to diseases while in the main garden. As part of its mandate, Bukola Chemical Industries gives farmers more information on how to maintain a healthy nursery bed. The nursery must be constructed in such a way that it runs from uh, south to north such that the sun runs across uh, that nursery bed. It is usually supposed to be lifted a bit and that's the essence of calling it a bed such that it has a very fine depth of soil which enable the tiny seedling uh, to establish roots and be able to grow perfectly well. So a, a good nursery bed can run uh, wide or width about four feet and it can go as long as anywhere between eight to 12 feet. That enables uh, a farmer to work from one side 
and to the other without necessarily stepping into the garden. For example, if you're picking the weeds or if you're spraying, uh, construct a shed right above the nursery such that when you lift the straw off the bed, it is placed on top of the created uh, or the raised uh, shed. That is meant to ensure that these seedlings do not get direct sunlight, which in most cases comes with heat, that could drive high rates of uh, transpiration, causing the seedlings to dry. Um, seedlings respond very fast and very well to foliar fertilizers because these are absorbed straight away from, uh, from, the, uh, from the leaves and they go right into the plant system and they're able to already deliver their function. So one of the fertilizers that does perfectly well is a combination of NPK and micronutrients in a fertilizer we call super green. It does a very good job, gives you a very good green color which enhances the photosynthetic activity and enabling your uh, seedlings to grow very fast. Remember you only have about 30 days. So with the super green, you're very sure that your crop will grow very well in the nursery. When you are preparing to transplant your uh, seedlings, we start a process of hardening off. Hardening off is that process where we reduce the too much care you've been giving to your nursery seedlings. Uh, you reduce the shading, uh, and that is gradually. You don't take off, the, remember the shade we constructed up? You don't take it off at once. So you keep reducing uh, the shading to allow in light and to allow a bit of heat to accumulate such that the seedlings get used to the conditions that are in the main garden. And then you also reduce the frequency of watering. If you are watering once a day, then probably you could skip a day or two such that the crop gets used to the situation in the field where it will not be getting water on a daily basis. So that is the hardening process. By the end of that, then your seedlings are probably ready to transplant. Remember, you do not, you, know, you don't transplant seedlings that are too old or you do not transplant seedlings that are still way too young. Either way, you lose. Make sure that you transplant only healthy and strong seedlings which have been hardened off and have been growing for a minimum of 30 days. Tea processing in Uganda is still not as developed as in other countries like Kenya, hence the low production. However, there is potential for the industry to grow and as such, stakeholders in the business have come together from different countries in a three-day exhibition to offer possible solutions to the challenges facing quality tea production in Uganda. Some of the challenges that the tea industry is still facing include lack of modern technology used in tea processing for Ugandan agribusiness farmers, inadequate information about tea growing and processing, challenges with hydropower and the environment which can easily be handled by the use of solar power systems, parking technologies and of course market accessibility for Uganda's tea. We know that for any industry energy is the basic need so we are providing the solutions in the energy sector one of our flagship product is a steam boiler and where we can provide the cost effective solution to the industry by using the different different fuels such as the biomass, solid fuel. The biomass can include the agricultural waste such as bagasse from the sugar industry, rice husk and uh, briquettes. These are all many options we are available with which can be a green energy to convert the uh, to generate the steam for the boiler which is utilized in the industry. Along with that we are also doing the value additions with the steam boiler by integrating it with the another product called as a helix so which is also generating the power by using the same steam in the industry. Tell us about the steam boiler and uh, how it works. Steam boiler, any industry if you consider that you require the heat source Heat is required like you are taking a tea factory as an example, you have to dry the tree leaves so for which the dryers are there and the heat source is the steam. The community in, the, in, in Uganda benefit from the technology we have. We have partnered with a company in UK called LX Power which provides a solution for the farmers and can save a lot of electricity. How does this company, why did we have to go to these companies? Because um, Elix Power 
uh, provides a, generate, a generator that can generate steam that is enough to power a whole line of deep processing plant. And how will this thing benefit the farmers? Umeme in Uganda uh, supplies power to the factories in Uganda. And if the farmer in Uganda who has the factory and they share a lot on the, on the resources, they will now be able to have a surplus power by saving what they're using in production. Uh, you see, we look at the either heat, there's heat exchangers, which I, that's the technical language we use. We have boilers. If you have a boiler, existing boiler, we can actually make for you a machine. The heat drying is, like we say, the temperatures. We have, di uh, I would say, different way of handling the steam. We use the, for the wetting, we use at 140 degrees centigrade. Then we have uh, 120, and then we have 110. It means the tea after the cutting goes into the, into the machine. There's already there's a cup of tea coming out on the other side. So from there we go and grade the tea from ABC and everything. So it's the simplest way. And even a layman can actually run that machine. You don't need a qualified engineer to run the machine. Like I said, we know the people in the, in the field, all of them are not qualified. That's why we made a simplest tea te drying technology for this one. You cannot start that if you've got 10 acres or somebody has got 20 acres. You can actually come together as a circle and create a circle. So you then try to create a bit of cash flow. We are there to assist you. We are, not, we are there. We want everyone to know what is drying technology, not everyone knows. You take uh, coffee is a different technology, you take tea is different, you can even uh, drying uh, vegetables as well. Now these machines we have designed in such a way that the power consumption is very low. When it, we install this at the factories, the farmers and the tea, uh, the tea factories, they can get the benefits from there. They are very low on fuel, on uh, power consumption and uh, when it comes to as the the, the main heat exchangers we used on the dryers, on this ones, they, they use wood. Most of the factories they are using wood for firing the boilers, where we get the steam, which you can see from here. And uh, wherever we have supplied these factories, it's uh, benefiting the farmers as you have put one factory now. And after some time, you benefit from the, once you start you know, selling the tea, then they go to the next line, depending on the production. After processing, tea should be stored in a cool, dry place away from moisture. Special tea packaging materials such as tea bags or paper foils are used for this purpose. For the market, different tea producers use different packaging styles to meet the needs of the desired clientele. Our focus at this exhibition is tea bagging machinery. Tea packaging is uh, a value addition you know, for, the, uh, for the tea farmers to upgrade their products uh, and this also relates in employment in the country where the tea is grown like in Uganda or Kenya, Tanzania, the neighboring countries and then they have the possibility to uh, sell it to the local supermarkets, to the markets and um, also e export finished products and uh, receive a much higher price than just by selling raw tea. Then what he needs to do, or, uh, he needs to uh, first dry the tea, then cut it accordingly and then uh, he is able then to package it but he needs certain materials to do that besides the tea bag machine which is, uh, we, if we look here, we have the filter paper, we have a thread and a tag. So these things need to be added and uh, he puts the tea into the tea bag machine and the materials and out comes the tea bag which is then put into a carton box or uh, can be taken out as a single piece or can be also put into a pouch depending on the market. The key issue here is actually the filter paper and the filter paper is not a normal paper it is a biological paper it's a abaca from the abaca tree and the special part of the papers has got a infusion. It's got very good infusion properties, so natural properties, and gives a good infusion. That means you, when you put the tea bag inside the teacup with hot water, it should infuse from two to five minutes, depending on the type of tea you have. But then there are also possibilities to overwrap these into individual envelopes. There is a paper envelope, 
which is quite popular, which can be then printed with a logo or different uh, pictures. The other one, to go a little on the higher side, is the with heat seat heat seal envelope paper, which is made out of OPP. So you can get they get a more glossy finish. This is uh, used in little upmarket uh, when you have a very good high quality of tea, or you use it as a flavor barrier where you have black tea with different flavors. Very popular is black tea with lemon, for example, or uh, if in Europe they have peppermint, also here. There it's a very smelly product, so then you have this as a barrier. And it can be, it's very hygienic because it's nicely wrapped, so nobody is tampering with the product. So you have a very clean and excellent looking uh, product which you then submerge into the teacup. In Uganda, um, most of the companies in Uganda who are doing tea bag packaging have our machinery. We are setting up now a technician in Mombasa who can come at short notice to Uganda and uh, um, service the machines if they are required. As it may be for the most crops, tea prices keep fluctuating on the world market. Prices fell 2.31 US dollars per kilogram in December 2018 to 2.13 USD per kilogram in March 2019. However, currently prices seem to have risen to 2.4 USD dollars per kilogram per month on the world market. Um, current CC, we especially this year, we are in a depressed situation because uh, world production has um, galloped much faster than demand. Um, demand is growing at 3% per annum, while production is growing at between 45 to 5%. So the, that has caused some pressure on prices, with production being around uh, 5.8 billion kilos of tea worldwide, uh, uh, sorry, demand, and uh, uh, production being over 6 billion. There is about 200 million kilos excess teas available in the market uh, which are causing the prices to be depressed. My encouragement to the farmers, please continue growing good teas. Quality is um, is all count. Uh, make tea of high quality that uh, farm, I mean, pro producers all over the world or buyers or consumers all over the world will discern more than the other type of tea. With Uganda being a potential producer for quality tea in East Africa, the industry is still dominated by a few tea producing private companies. This accounts for only 10% of the tea production potential for the country. As the government and international stakeholders take interest in supporting the local tea farmers and producers, the future looks bright for the Ugandan tea industry.